Disclaimer. We are interested in everything and experts in nothing. We enjoy learning, but get it wrong sometimes. We mean no disrespect, and if we mess up, kindly correct us. Let's take this ride together, unless your intention is to cause harm or distress. In which case, with utmost haste, fuck right off. Okay, so I have 11 pages of notes. Oh my God, are there <laughs> pictures? There are pictures. Okay, thank you. There are pictures and I looked at a lot of sites and I copied every fucking link. So there's a lot of references. Okay. But there's still a lot of content, so we're going to get into it. Oh God, is this a part of the theme that I haven't guessed yet? or is this... No, this okay. is not part of the theme. This was right. completely a tangent. So this week's episode came to me while I was watching Taskmaster with my son. Okay. And I told him the meaning of a lullaby, which was brand new information to him. Which one? So we'll get to it. I thought, why not research the origins of a bunch of lullabies and nursery rhymes? <gasps> yeah! So here we are. Oh my God, this is going to be so fun. I knew you would love it. They're okay. all about death. It's so horrifying. Okay. So there were so many. So many. By the way. So I I couldn't possibly do them all. No. No. I really couldn't. So there's going to have to be like a part two. And possibly a three and possibly a four. There's so many. One a month. (laughs) This could go on a while. This could go on a while. Um, I actually, I found a website that had like nursery rhymes just by alphabetical. (laughs) And so I started going through the alphabet and I literally had to stop because there was just too many. And I'm like, like, there are like two that I definitely want to hit. And then I'm just done because right. there's so much. So we're going to start with, I guess, the origin of lullabies. So lullabies have been documented as far back as 4,000 years ago mm-hmm. in ancient Babylon. Mm-hmm. Um, the lullaby there was recorded on a tablet and was essentially telling the child that it was disturbing the house god <laughs> and would soon be punished for it. Please stop crying. We all need to sleep. <laughs> Uh, which sounds harsh as fuck, but let's be real, are our lullabies any better? No. No. They're really not. <laughs> they're really not. So the first and when you're an exhausted parent, you're like, oh my god. Even, <laughs> even the gods are sick of your baby shit. Yes. Please go to sleep. Yes. Yes. So, Rockabye Baby. Oh no. Okay. This is this is gonna be bad. Okay, so let's recap the lyrics. Rock a bye, baby, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come baby, cradle and all. Yeah. Which I'm sorry. Who the fuck is treeing their kids? Let's talk about okay. it. Okay. So uh that is, as Malcolm Reynolds would say, morbid and creepifying. Yeah. Um, but where does it come from? I'm going to guess a drunk person. I really don't know. So there are several theories. Okay. Um, one theory involves a family that lived in Derbyshire, England in the 1700s. This isn't the Sonny Bean clan, is it? I don't think so. Okay, good. No? Yeah, no one. Um, the legend states that Luke and Kate Kenyon made a home inside of a hollowed out yew tree. Okay. Allegedly, they also hollowed out a branch of the tree to place their babies in so the wind would lull them to sleep. This is a horrifying prospect. All I can, you know, go on. Well, fun fact, the yew tree does still exist, um, but it was lit on fire. (gasps) Why? By arsons in the 1930s. Because they didn't want babies in trees? Because they felt like it. I don't know. So it doesn't look like much these days. This is what the tree in question looks like now. Not much. Not much. Yeah. So that's one option. Did they have really small humans? Well, I I don't know. Okay, go on. Um, Another possible origin story states that a young pilgrim boy witnessed Native American women using tree cradles, which are kind of like hammocks with a firm backing, from what I can gather. Like a papoose? It looks like this. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's actually in the tree. That looks like secure yeah. and comfy. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. Um, so it could be that. Yeah. Uh, another theory states that the lullaby was written about King James II's infant son what in a wish that the son would die huh? and then King James II could be overthrown. Who wanted his son to die? I'm really not clear on why the son had to die for the king to be overthrown. I know what. Honestly. What did the kid do? Um, but I had enough going on in this episode, so I didn't this want to run down that rabbit hole. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Moving on. So King James II's son right is supposed to die yeah so some the one theory says that it's essentially a death wish wish for the king's infant son rude very rude okay um another theory okay um davy crockett's cousin effie crockett (laughs) claimed credit for the lullaby in 1872 okay although there's some dispute on her claim she does have an imdb page which is absolutely covered in soundtrack credits for Rockabye Baby. Okay. 205 credits as of May 8th when I started the research on this episode. Can she explain why the fuck she was putting a baby in a branch? Yeah, I don't know about that. But in direct contradiction to that story, okay. Rockabye Baby was originally hush a Baby. That makes sense. Which was printed in the Mother Goose Melody in 1765. Okay. And presumably existed before it was printed. Of course. Yeah. As most did. Some historians think for 200 years or more. I believe it. Yeah. Based on this printed version of the lullaby, it was meant as a cautionary tale. Don't go climbing trees, you're going to fucking die. Well, the footnote on the page read... This may serve as a warning to the proud and ambitious who climb so high uh, that they generally fall at last. Okay. So, so it's a metaphor. Yeah, like a parable almost. It's a parable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God nobody's putting babies in trees. Yeah. Except for I'm sure somebody put babies in trees. Moving so, on. Moving on. Another well-known nursery rhyme is Ring Around the Rosie. Now, okay. All right. <laughs> My whole life, and I'm talking about when I was little, I assumed this was about the Black Plague. Yes. So there's another version, yes. by the way, called Ring a Ring of Roses. Okay. So the lyrics, by the way, there's way more lyrics to this than I ever knew. Yeah, because they used to do these as like skipping rope songs. Yeah. And also this is like the... English version? Because apparently their version is different than here in America. That's not shocking. Yeah. So their version is ring a ring o roses, a pocket full of posies, a tissue, a A tissue, tissue. we all fall fall down. down. Yeah, Yeah. I remember that version. The king has sent his daughter to fetch a pail of water, a tissue, a tissue, we We all all fall fall down. down. Yep. The bird upon the steeple sits high High above above the people, people. a tissue, a tissue, tissue, we all fall fall down. down. The cows are in the meadow, lying fast asleep. A tissue, a tissue. We all get up again. Okay. Yeah. So I, like you, always thought it was about the, the plague. Black, plague the Black Plague because plague, that's yeah. not the version. That's not our version. No. Ours is the ring around the, the rosy, rosy, pocket full of posies, posies. Ashes, 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 we yeah. all fall yeah. down. And we don't have all these extra verses. No, we don't. So per americansongwriter.com. Ring around the rosy meant the itchy rash around the infected sore of a person sick with the plague. Yes! Pocket full of posies were the flower petals that plague doctors showered Showed upon in their... their noses, in their plague masks. No, showered upon their deceased patients, oh. apparently, which also helped ward off their odor. Ashes, ashes meant the cremated remains of the deceased, and yes, whether sick or not, we all fall down at the end of our lives. Yes. Um, eerie fun fact, during COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, the sound was u- song was used as a way to ensure one had washed their hands long enough, about yes. 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. That is a little creepy. It is a little creepy, but you know what? If you've got a plague song and you got a plague, make it work. I mean, you might as well, you right? Might as well. well, apparently that might not be accurate. It might not actually be about the plague. That's what we believe here in America, but that doesn't jive with the British lyrics. Okay, so... Right? Right. What is the British... So, American songwriter continues. 
The first recorded version of the nursery rhyme did not show up until the mid-1800s, okay. some 200 years, years after, after the, plague. the plague. Yeah. That said, we just talked about how the song existed probably 200 probably years before 200 it was written, before, so not, that's not make yeah. or break, right? Um, one would think that if one-third of Europe, i.e. 50 million people, mm -hmm. died and a convenient little nursery rhyme had come up to commemorate their demise, someone would have written it down a time or two before the mid-1800s. What is more likely is the rhyme was really just a fun game that manifested later after the Great Plague, and it was just a ditty for kids. Okay. Likely they joined hands around a flower bush or a rose tree mm -hmm. in French rosier. Sure. I don't know. Um, circle it a few times and fell down laughing or even sneezing from the flower's pollen. Okay, that makes sense. Or perhaps, as some say, the fall meant a type of curtsy. Okay. So, yeah, there are a great many variations of the verse from German to Indian, and each is different. Mm -hmm. Some include different breads. Some include terms like husha busha or redbird bluebird. Okay. The fact that so many variants exist means that it likely did not originate via a single historical event like the plague. Probably not. No. Mind blown, because I really yes. thought I knew that one. I thought I knew that one, too. And then also, there's been various other plagues that weren't as wide scale obviously like yeah they actually had an additional breakout of the bubonic plague in scotland in edinburgh specifically and it was not during the original mm, horror show it was remember, like a resurgence it was a resurgence and it was kind of a pocketed one mm -hmm. but uh it i oh my, what was it i was the first time I, I was near reading about it, it was like one of those ghost hunter shows, but not like a, it was like an old version, just like famous haunted areas. Mm -hmm. There's apparently catacombs under Edinburgh and a lot really? of plague victims were shoved down there. Like, oh. so they like built, a plague pit. Kind of not really, though, because oh. they built Edinburgh and then they kept building on top of it. Oh, so, okay, like, yeah. It's technically the old city, but they started building on top of the old city. So it became this, like, catacombs-like area. And that's where the poor and the vagrants, and then, of course, anyone who was found to be the plague, they shoved in this catacombs area. So it's, according to the show, extremely haunted. There's a little girl talking about having the plague. Oh. Supposedly a little ghost girl crying because she's been banished to the catacombs because she and her mother had the plague. But that was not during the time of the bubonic plague. I feel like it was in the... 1700s hmm i don't remember the exact time frame but i know it was it was after and it wasn't like a couple months after so it wasn't like yeah yeah still dying out it had been a long time yeah um but yeah so that was my thing <laughs> that's cool that's cool yeah actually i just watched the entire uh series of ghosts like the british sitcom oh ghosts oh. so they had a plague pit under of the course, house of course and did. so i got so excited thinking yeah, i knew where you were going but no technically okay. it would have been a pit because they just <laughs> left them there yeah nobody went down to go get them and bury them they yeah. left them there but uh, so speaking of mind blown okay uh i was not prepared for the next one i wonder if i know it um eeny meeny miny mo that's a horrible one it's so horrible it's so bad I had no idea. I did so, not. So, uh, the version of the lyrics that I grew up with. Yes. Yes. Is eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let, let him, him go. go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And then you follow it up with, my mother told me to pick the very best one and you, you are, are not it. Yes. And then for whatever reason, we'd add, you dirty, dirty dish rag, you boo hoo. Yes. I don't know why we did that. I don't know that. why we did that either. But that, that yeah. Um, those are not the original lyrics no they're not yeah I, I recently found out about this one yeah me too like earlier this month clearly yeah. when i was doing this research yeah, no. <sighs> so the original version apparently features the end slur and yes. may in fact be related to the slave trade yes per vox.com it was actually part of a 2004 lawsuit against southwest airlines mm -hmm. The black plaintiffs in that case sued the airline for discrimination because a flight attendant had used the rhyme while urging them to take their seats. <gasps> I know. The 
fuck is wrong with that flight attendant? Uh, well, I would like to believe she didn't know, but if you didn't know, why would you use it? Because that's not the correct context for no, the rhyme. No, you would not. So I assume she did not I say tiger. feel like she had to know. Yeah. I didn't, but I feel like she had to oh, because... She knew. Yeah. Anyway, um... So the jury did not side with the plaintiffs, and though they appealed, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed the initial ruling. Which is, bitch, you be dumb. Well, no, they, they did not side with the plaintiffs. Oh, the plaintiffs, damn it. Okay, I was thinking, no, oh, that's, they that's bullshit. They didn't win it. They didn't win it. say, I can't say free speech if she's using that word in place of tiger. Well, I don't know how much she said. Uh, I didn't look into the entire case and still, but i oh was God. absolutely baffled to learn oh, okay. that something seemed that we grew up with us just an innocent little pick whose turn it is rhyme had such really dark, so origins. dark origins um yeah so anyway i told all my kids um and we're just gonna go ahead and retire that yeah we're that gonna retire needs that. to die it's, so it's never coming back there's no reason for it. Nope. Yeah. We so. will go Duck Duck Goose until we find out that's about a serial killer or some shit. <laughs> Is Duck Duck Goose on here? No. Okay. You okay, can do that in volume two. <laughs> um, so that's all for that one. Uh, let's talk about Jack and Jill. Okay. So. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Yes. And then... Then up got Jack and said to Jill, as in his arms he took her, brush off that dirt for you're not hurt, let's fetch that pail of water. That one I never did as a kid. So Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch the pail of water and took it home to Mother Dear who thanked her son and daughter. Okay. Apparently. Apparently. That's all nurseryrhymes.com. Okay. Another variation that I read was Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got, and home did trot as fast as he could caper. So it would paper. Yeah. Went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and, and brown and paper. paper. Yeah, and I never understood that. Yeah, so that's that's from ClassicFM.com. Uh, a little different. And my very first question was, what's what this vinegar and brown, vinegar paper? brown paper? It was yeah. on, okay, I had a... Okay, this is going to make me old, which is fine, because I'm old. I have a VHS tape of Mother Goose Rhymes. Yeah. And this was on it. Yeah. And he did have, like, they literally put a crown, like a fucking cardboard crown on him as they sang that line. I was like, how does this fix a concussion? Yeah, so, per historyhouse.co.uk, uh, vinegar and brown paper was a remedy for bruises, swelling, and headaches. Did it work? I have no idea, but it was a popular remedy. So that's why. God, you would smell awful and then potentially have that burning if you had like a cut on your head that you didn't know. Yeah, that would suck. Or even if you did, because you, you fell. Because you fucking fell. Yeah. Although the vinegar, I mean, think would probably work if it's like disinfectant, disinfectant or something. But Maybe. I mean, they way, use vinegar in household horrifying. cleansing. Yeah. So. No. Okay. Anyway, so origins. Yes. So many options. So many options. Is so, one of them about the king? Like an actual king? I don't think so. Okay. Because a lot of times... Well, like... maybe. Okay. Literally, there were so many options, I yeah. quit. It said there were more, okay. and I stopped. So... Yeah. Because sometimes they made up these rhymes, and they were talking about the monarchy, but they couldn't use names, or else they would get killed. <laughs> yeah, no. I understand that. Um, so one potential origin story was, in the 16th century, first of all, Jack and Jill were generic names for meaning a boy and a girl. Boy and girl. Yeah. So kind of like now, John Doe and Jane John Doe. Doe, and Jane Doe yeah. yeah, it's just generic male and female names. However, mm-hmm. allegedly the original lyrics were Jack and Gill. Oh, that makes sense. Which are both boys' names. Oh. Yeah, so they were not a boy and a girl. It was, it was two boys. Two boys. Apparently. All right. Um, so some people believe that the rhyme is based on real people. Um, in Kilmerston, Somerset, there is a hill called Jack and Jill Hill. Oh, okay. According to the legend, Is Jack, it Jack and Jill Hill or Jack and Gill Hill? Jill. Okay. According to the legend, Jack and Jill were married. Okay. Jill was pregnant and Jack went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. As expected, yes. right? Um, Jack fell down 
or in other versions, was struck by an errant boulder from a nearby quarry. Oh, shit. And died. Jill was so heartbroken that she died shortly after giving birth. That poor kid. The orphaned son was raised by the village. Okay. Um, and called Jill's son. Jillson is a common surname, surname. in the area, okay. presumably meaning the descendants of Jill's son. Okay. But it's spelled, it might be Gilson. Gilson. G-I-L-S-O-N. Yeah. Gilson. Anyway. Okay. Um, but. Or Gilson. That town has a plaque that they've Aww. put up about the legend. Yeah. And there's an up close of it. And also I have it in context in the wall on okay. Amps Lane where it was erected. Okay. Um, there's the Jack there's and Jill the well. well. Yep. And what is this? I forget. I already forget the name. Kilmerston? Kilmerston. Okay. Here's a marker leading up the way. And it says Jill came tumbling, tumbling after. after. Yep. Okay. Um, so there were a couple of other theories, like I said. But because there was a lot of notes already, I sure. did not go down the rabbit hole. Because it would take you all day. <laughs> yes. But that was the most fun one. Okay. Um, so finally, the rhyme that started the whole conversation. Okay. The Muffin Man. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Because I really hope it's the serial killer. So. So. The lyrics. Yes. Oh, do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Do you, do you know, know the, the muffin, muffin Man who lives on Drury, Drury Lane? Lane? Yeah. So this one is hotly debated. Yes, I know. So you can decide for yourselves, but we're going to talk about it. I've decided for myself, obviously, but we'll just continue. <laughs> so some claim that this nursery rhyme was intended to warn children about the infamous Muffin Man, Frederick Thomas Linwood who was a serial killer whose M.O. included luring children using his baked goods. Apparently, mm -hmm. like, tied a muffin to a string and, like, lured them into dark alleys. Okay, I'm sorry. But I feel like that's so cartoonish. That is so cartoonish! <laughs> At the same time, I'm thinking, like, okay, they use that trope a lot. Yeah. And at one point, you have to stop and go, why is this muffin moving on its own? Maybe I shouldn't eat this muffin. Right. But then you could make the other argument of it became a trope for a reason. reason. It's true. It's true. It's true. I yeah. Don't. Yeah. So anyway, Mr. Linwood is alleged to have lived on Drury Lane between 1589 and 1598. Mm -hmm. If he was indeed a real person and a serial killer, he would have been England's first known serial killer. Mm hmm. He was supposedly known as the Muffin Man or the Drury Lane Dicer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I remember that part. His body count allegedly included 15 children and seven rival pastry chefs. Okay. First of all, <laughs> how the fuck did they not run him out? I don't know. So I thought that was really funny, actually. Yeah. And we'll get we'll come back to it because mm -hmm. there's more I want to say about that. But another theory relies on alternative lyrics of Dorset Lane instead okay. of Drury, Drury Lane. Lane. Dorset Lane was once known or was once known as one of the worst streets in London. I was going to say was it like Murder Alley? And it was the scene of the 1888 murder of Mary Jane Kelly by Jack the Ripper. Ripper. Yeah. The rhyme may be about Jack the Ripper oh, okay. and not the Drury Lane dicer whose existence is unsubstantiated. Right. Other accounts claim that the rhyme originated in the 1820s and was much more innocuous, literally about a muffin a muffin man living on Drury Lane, sort of like a word of mouth jingle advertisement. Oh, okay. Like, hey, I like muffins, but I don't have time to cook. Oh, really? Well, do you do know you about the muffin, muffin man? man? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so ultimately, Snopes.com rules that it is unproven that the rhyme is about Mr. Linwood or, or Jack, Jack the, the Ripper. Ripper. So for the moment, choose the theory that you like best. So <laughs> while I was reading that Snopes article about it, mm -hmm. um, they I just they said that the initial theory mm -hmm. of the Thomas Linwood thing was on I already forget the name of the website, but basically it's like a satire website. Oh, okay. Like a like the Onion or something. It's like Encyclopedia, maybe oh, okay. something like that. Yeah. And so they were like, it's supposed to be a joke, we think. 
Oh, okay. But they also said that they reached out to, like, historical societies in... That area? Yeah. And hadn't heard anything yet, so they called it unproven, and that yeah. was as of, like, March 2021. Okay. So, I so mean, it's it still could, unproven. It could be unproven. It yeah. could be not. Um, but I think if they knew that there was a child killer, I don't care how good his muffins were, <laughs> they were going to take that shit into their own hands. Right? Maybe they couldn't prove it. But also, I just think it's so funny, like... Seven rival pastry chefs. Right. How many pastry How many... chefs were in this tiny ass town? Yes, I mean it's London. I don't think it's that tiny, but still, like rival. Pa... Are pastry chefs like? Is that a hotly rivaled well, industry? Sure it is. Like, if you had a bakery and you were like the one bakery on this street, and then three more popped up, you're gonna be like, "Fuck!" There goes my customer base. And I don't know. They have sharp implementations in kitchens maybe they get shitty i mean chefs are sometimes crazy who knows i don't know it was just that, that just seems so seems, funny to me yeah, like really like, that okay, does seem a killer pulling muffins on strings all right fine seven pastry chefs hold the fuck up <laughs> that's where we're stuck Look, but yeah know, it's it's mm, i have questions i have questions but i'm yes. at least entertained um also, point of fact, while we're on the topic, mm -hmm. um, currently Marianne Cotton is accepted as English or England's first serial killer. Is she the one that killed babies? Maybe. Uh, she was hanged in 1873 at the age of 40 for at least 21 murders, including 11 of her 13 children. Oh, Marianne Cotton. I know her. She came from Ireland and she was fucking murdering anybody that got in her way. Basically, three of her four husbands, one lover, and her mother. Also, her sister should be on there. It's not her actual sister, but it was whatever family adopted her. They adopted... Okay, both girls were working girls, like, not sex workers. They were both, like, laundresses. Okay. They adopted both of the girls. However, Mary was kept as a servant, whereas the other was treated like an adopted daughter. So it wasn't actually her sister, but it was her sister. Yeah, and like could she be. She murdered the sister to get with the sister's husband. And she's fucking weird, man. Yeah, no, absolutely could be because the ones they called out, the 11, the 3, the mm -hmm. 1, the 1, that doesn't equal 21. No. So maybe she's on the list, too. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that I was... I could be confusing her with somebody else because I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. Yeah, I feel like we need I to do an episode lot. about her. Yeah. But that's not this episode. No. Um, this episode is done. <laughs> okay. Do you, did you find, um, this is not near sure, but did you find anything about the Pied Piper? I did not do anything on the Pied Piper. Okay. So there's the story of the Pied Piper, right? Where he's hired to get all the rats out of yes. town. He gets out all the rats. Is that a Grimm story? I think it is. I think it is a Grimm's fairy tale. I was just saying, because it was, well, it was on the Grimm TV show. So yeah. it's, in the, it, it's part of the collections, the Pied Piper. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he gets all the rats out. They say, oh, we're not going to pay you either at all or as much as we promised, blah, blah, blah. So he comes back at night and he takes all the children. The, oh, you know, the Pied Piper. That sounds familiar. He's yeah. He's leading the children and he leads them to an opening in the mountain and they're never seen again. And it was, that's the whole, like, pay your fucking people. That was the story. Blah, pay blah. your bills. Okay. Your bills. That's dramatic. They actually have, like, documentation that this potentially could have happened. Because there was a village that had, like, all villages had rat problems back yeah. then. Yeah. Of course they did. Some still do. You know, rats will get anywhere that there's food. But there is a village where, unexplicably, all of the children went missing. All of them. Wow. So they think that this is based on an actual event. Now, of course, hearsay and blah, 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 blah. Like something horrible could have happened to the children. Yeah. And, you know, but it was no, like, they didn't have an answer to it. Like there wasn't a plague. There wasn't a whatever. All of the kids gone. All of them. Yeah. So it was like, oh, shit. This... That would have that would have worked in the idioms episode yes. two with the, the pay, pay the piper. piper. Yeah. Pay, pay the, the piper. piper. Wow. Essentially, yeah. Well, we're going to have to. We're going to have to dig into that one. Oh, God. There's so many more idioms we could get into. It's gonna be idioms so or nursery rhymes. nursery rhymes. That'll fit in either one. I've heard that London Bridge is falling down. Oh. Was about... Uh... Okay. I've heard a couple theories. One is that it was about a fucking Viking raid. And they oh. literally set fire to 
the bridge that was available. I've heard it's also about the fall of a particular monarch. Could be. I can't remember the details. But I know that London Bridge's falling down had some kind of potential second meaning, as did Mary Mary Quite Contrary being about um, Mary, uh, Queen Mary of England, Henry VIII's daughter. Okay. Um, and about her, like, fucking murdering all the Protestants and shit. Yeah. So, I mean, there's some fun ones that I've seen. Yeah. We're going to have to do another one. We are. We'll because, yeah, the London key. Bridge one, the second verse was take a key and lock them up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We're yeah. going to have to do another we're episode. Gonna, oh, oh, it was, it was potentially about the murders of the of the two princes. There was a famous, there were two princes that were in line for the throne that their uncle murdered them so he could keep the power. They disappeared. Nobody knows what happens to that happened to them, but they're pretty fucking sure that they were murdered. Yeah. And but, I think it was them. But why is it my fair lady? I don't know. My fair, fair lady. lady. I don't know. Yeah. Don't All know. Right. Well, I think we're gonna have to do a sequel. Sequel. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh if you enjoyed the podcast, you can give us a like, share, subscribe on any platform. Uh, we are on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube at Our Trivial Obsessions. We're on Twitter at Our Trivial Pod. Mm -hmm. We have a website, www.OurTrivialObsessions.com. That's where you're going to find our episode extras and references. Which will be like eight pages from this last one from you. I have so many pictures <laughs> on this episode. Yes, there'll be lots of pictures up as soon as uh, Tyler does the website. So. Yes. Um, or you can email us at randomqueensobsess at gmail.com. Random. Because we are. Queens. Because we are. Obsess. Because, because we, we do. do. So email us there with any topic requests you have for a future episode or anything you'd like to add to the conversation. And that's going to wrap it up this week. All so right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.